Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pam and today we are going to be doing soap brows. Soap brows are not a new technique that's been around for quite some time. It's really popular in the drag world and in the editorial makeup world, but now we're gonna try it to see if it's functional and usable for us at home. So today we're gonna be going in with pear soap and we're gonna give this technique a whirl. That being said, let's get into the eyebrow tutorial. So to get started, we need, of course, soap. The soap I'm gonna use is Pears Soap. I bought this on Amazon, it comes in a two pack, but you guys, I went into Patel Brothers, which is an Indian grocery store, and they had an entire bin in the front sitting filled with this soap, and I think they had another color as well. I don't know what the color difference is, but the video I saw on TikTok, the girl recommended this soap, so that's what I got. You're also gonna need a spoolie. This one is a Morphe spoolie. These are like $3 on the Morphe website, and I always just take the head of the spoolie brush and bend it. This, to me, is the easiest way to really manipulate the brow hair. Now, I've got my full face of makeup on in terms of foundation, concealers, and powders because that is actually how I do my makeup. So I know that some people will do their brows first and then go in and finish off the rest of the face. But in order for me to really see if this works for me, I needed to just do my makeup the way I normally do. So we've got some soap here. I've got it out on a little plate and I tried this yesterday with just a hydrating setting spray, nothing really intense. And I felt like it took me a lot longer because I didn't use this. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray right here. This is very long lasting, mattifying, slightly dry if you use too much of it, but I needed this component with this soap to really make this eyebrow look work. So what we're gonna do is take this, give it a nice little spritz. We're gonna grab a decent amount of product on our spoolie, and now we're just going to start to push our brow hairs upward. So as you can see, it looks like I'm surprised or I've been electrocuted. My eyebrow hair is standing upright at attention. And now that I feel like I like how broad and wide they've opened up my eyebrow shape, I'm just gonna take this top column right here and then slightly start to comb that down so that they're more at a 45 degree angle. Um, really, so the setting spray plus the soap gives the base a nice straight angle. And then once it's kind of dried in that position, we just go through and push it to an angle and we've got a nice feathery brow. I wanna be the first one to say I am so thankful this trend is in. I have been looking for a way to consolidate my eyebrow routine and I feel like this is gonna be it. So let's get this other eyebrow done. Okay, so now that we have our eyebrow hair going in the exact direction we want, which is straight up and slightly angled at a 45 degree angle, let's go in and fill them in. For this look, I wanted to use my favorite NYX micro brow pencil. This is in the color espresso and they sell these on Amazon. I actually bought a ton right before quarantine hit. So then at least if my world was crumbling, at least my eyebrows were kind of okay. Um, all jokes aside, I just love this eyebrow pencil. I think it's really good. So what we're gonna do is start to feather through I don't want to read a lot of density. I don't want to overfill my brows. I think it's really important that we are using the pencil by holding it at the very end and applying the least amount of pressure and starting to just create a bottom border through here with light feathery strokes. And one thing I noticed is instead of dragging the pencil to create the bottom border like I would have done with other brow techniques, once I hit the arch, I'm actually gonna just start to continue to feather back so that I can keep that complementary shape of the hair and the stroke. And one thing I've noticed about this as well is just the least amount of product, the better. And with a ton of like powders and pencils and gels, you really wanna just pick one or two things and work with it because if you overdo products and your filling technique, you're just gonna defeat the purpose of this look. You want this look to be very minimal, you still want it to look like hair, and you really don't want it to take a long time. So you can see that we have gaps, and that's actually okay. That is not a bad thing. That makes it look like an organic brow. Now, if the gap is really obvious, I encourage you to fill that in, but I don't mind that it looks a little a little organic, a little, a little natural, fluffy, soft. All right, I am pretty pleased with that brow. I think it's a very soft, subtle brow, and it didn't take me very long at all. So let's go ahead and get this brow done. Mm -hmm. 
All right, you guys, we've got both brows filled in. That literally took just a moment and I'm super happy with the way it looks. I want to go in and clean this under area with a little bit of concealer. For me, that is just a non-negotiable. I have dark, thick, coarse black hair and when it grows in and you can see it through my makeup, it looks like someone just took a little pepper grinder and sprinkled a little black pepper all along here. So I'm gonna grab some concealer and get this under part cleaned up without overly sculpting it. That's the key. So this step is optional. I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. Hydro Camo Concealer. It's a satin finish concealer right here. And the reason I went with this is because from my experience with using this concealer, it shears out very quickly and that's what I want. I just want a really sheer, nice, flexible formula that's gonna create a nice clean border at the bottom without, again, a really sculpting. I do sometimes go in with the cream concealer here as well, but today we wanna keep things light and natural, so we're gonna go in with this formula. And I literally just place a dot here and it's right underneath the arch. And then I just take a flat brush and I start to sculpt. And for this look, I am not gonna take the concealer above the brow. I want that slight irregularity. I call it perfect imperfection. You kind of want it to just be sculpted and soft and not overly groomed at the top because if we started to carve that out and chisel that out, we would kind of defeat the purpose of this whole look. One other option as well is you can take the Urban Decay Brow Blade right here. This is in the color Neutral Nana. This comes in a shade darker called Dark Drapes. For me, I thought it was a little too intense, so I went with one shade up. And you can start to create little strokes throughout the brow if you do feel like you are wanting a little bit more dimension. You guys, I am so obsessed. Let's finish off the rest of the face. For eyeshadow, I'm gonna go in with the Persona Identity 2 palette. I adore this palette. If you do not have it in your collection, I highly recommend it. This palette right here has amazing colors. This is one of my favorite neutral browns. This dark brown is so opaque. This black is just so gorgeous. And this yellow is so pretty stacked on top of this dark brown. So overall, very good palette. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this passionate color. And since we kept the eyebrow soft and fluffy, we're gonna keep our eye makeup really soft and fluffy, as if eye makeup can be fluffy, but you know what I mean. Keep things light, natural, effortless. We don't want a carved crease or anything overly chiseled for this look. Just gonna grab a little brown eyeshadow through here, the color Passionate. I guess it's not really a brown, it's more of a coral. And with the more flat brush like this one from Morphe, I'm just gonna grab a little bit more of that shadow and I'm just gonna lightly dust that underneath the lower lash line. Again, nothing overly defined and chiseled. We just want washes of color. Now with that same flat brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of this color called Brave right here. And I'm just gonna tap that throughout the lower lash line area just to give the eye a little bit of a gradient. Back over everything with a little fluffy brush right here just to bring it all together. And finally, I'm gonna take a little bit of this gold color right here called Unique. And I'm gonna take that and mix it with Honest, which is more of a, a light champagne color. And that's gonna go on the inner corners right here just to wake things up. Dust off the under eyes. I mean, it's already coming together so nicely. Like I liked my brows before, but now that I've got eye makeup on, I like love them so much more. For eyeliner, I'm gonna go in with my Benefit Roller Liner right here. I love brown eyeliner. I think it's so natural, so soft, so easy to just work with any look what a little dark brown does for the eye. It's just so pretty. It gives it a little definition, but it's not too much. I think I kind of went a little crazy on this wing right here. What do we think? To look in like other mirrors to see, because I think the camera monitors sometimes like plays tricks with my eyes. We've, we've done better, you guys, but it's okay. No worries. For mascara, I'm gonna go in with the Voluminous Waterproof Mascara. I love this formula. The waterproof is definitely not as good as the original, but you know what? It's like 110 degrees or something here. It's so hot and we can't take any chances. And then to make sure we're getting every lash in the corner, we're gonna go in with the Maybelline Lash Discovery. This is also waterproof, but the wand, you guys, look how tiny and minute that thing is. So this is really good for getting in those corners and really making sure that you are hitting the lash band. I always go in with my lash discovery after I do my mascara, just to kind of go through and make sure that the base of the lash is coated and that the corner Corners are actually getting covered evenly. Let's move on to the face. I'm gonna go in with my trusted, tried and true Hourglass Ambient Light Highlighter. I know this is not a new product, but you guys, there's just really nothing like it. It goes on like if highlighter was like in butter form, I, that doesn't make any sense, but it's just so pretty. So I really like mixing these two colors right here and then just patting them. And I start literally right next to the bridge of my nose and I just kind of push it through to the tops of my cheekbones and it just lifts the features, but it's not like overly shimmery. And then whatever's left on my brush, I'm just dusting it over my lips. Blush, we're actually gonna take a little bit of this color right here that we use in our crease. And we're gonna mix it in with the empowered color right here. And we're just gonna kind of create a nice little blush combo. 
and we're gonna tuck it in right to the apple and then push it up towards the corner of the eye to lift the features. See how good that looks? I am all about using eyeshadows as blushes. And I like highlighting before my blush because to me it looks like you have a nice glow to your skin rather than having a glow product sitting on top of your skin. I'm gonna go back in and kind of smooth that all out with my highlighter brush. All right, you guys, we're coming together. Let's do lips. Okay, so I got a work call, so off camera I put my lashes on. The pair I'm wearing is from Kiss. It is the Pumped Up Effect in this style right here. Very similar to an Ardell Wispy, and I'm such a fan of Ardell Wispies. The ritzy style has a nice clear band with a nice separated look and a little flare out on the ends. These lashes are so comfortable. I die for Kiss lashes, and I've tried high end, low end, everything in between. I always come back to Kiss. So I also did my lips off camera, and I went in with Maybelline Raw Chocolate. It's a matte lipstick right here and it looks just like this. It's gorgeous. This is what it swatches like. So just a beautiful toned down mauve brown shade. And I went over the edges with the Makeup Forever Limitless Brown Eye and Lip Pencil. This pencil is a very nice rich chocolate brown, but complemented with this lipstick right here, it creates the combo I'm wearing. So with that being said, this is the final look. You guys, I am so blown away by my brows. I love the way they turned out and I feel like they look very soft, natural, organic, not overly filled in, but still sculpted and still provides my face with a nice frame. So if I could offer any words of advice with the soap brow technique, I do recommend using the pear soap. I loved the way this went onto my brow. It doesn't feel overly itchy or uncomfortable. I feel like they're gonna stay in place and a little bit of it went a really long way. I do recommend using a setting spray. The one I recommend is the Urban Decay All Nighter. This one dries down matte and really provides the brows with a nice lifted look. Yesterday I did this look with just a regular setting spray, very similar to like a MAC Fix Plus, and I didn't get the same results, so I highly recommend going in with this. This has been a game changer. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe, comment below, let me know if you want to see more videos like this. And if you do recreate a soap brow, absolutely let me know. I'll be posting more details on Instagram and I'll catch up with you guys later. Bye.